Hello, how are you doing? Um, today I'm going to be talking about how to make sauerkraut. Um, I recently uh, jarred up that huge container of sauerkraut that I had, and I have them in jars, and they started a new batch, and this huge cookie jar, huge. Start a new batch, and um, in about two weeks I'll have some nice good sauerkraut, and I'm gonna put that in jars also. Um, if you don't know what sauerkraut is, it's fermented cabbage, shredded cabbage that has been fermented. The word sauerkraut actually means sour cabbage in German, um, but the Chinese have been making this stuff for thousands of years, over 2,000 years, and it was introduced into Europe a thousand years later, and now it's like a huge part of the European cuisine. It's made with the help of a friendly and beneficial bacteria called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus which is also used in the process of making wine, beer, kimchi, cider, yogurt, cheese, and uh, other fermented foods. In fact, this bacteria is actually present in the human body. It's in your stomach, your intestines, and the females is actually in your... Well, I'll just let you look that one up for yourself. In northern parts of the world, many cultures actually used fermenting as a way to store their food because there wasn't refrigerators. And sauerkraut is actually packed with vitamin C and other minerals and nutrients and helps build your immune system and was a way to actually fight off uh, colds and flus and things of that nature during cold seasons. Okay, now on to making the sauerkraut. Step one, what you want to do is you want to get cabbage. You want to get few cabbage heads depending on how much you how much sauerkraut you want to make that's your decision but I I like to make a lot of sauerkraut because I like to jar it up and give it to friends so I use about six heads of cabbage I like to mix a blend of white cabbage and red cabbage the reason for this is because it gives a really cool color step two you chop up your cabbage you want to chop your cabbage up into small pieces fine pieces or thin strips the reason for this is it creates more surface area, so it helps the fermenting and helps you draw out the liquid also. You can do this by cutting it with a knife using a cheese grater or throwing it into a fruit processor. Step three, after you've chopped up all your cabbage, you want to throw it into a large container. Um, what I use is actually these huge cookie jars. You can find these at Walmart for about 10 bucks, but any large container will do. Step four, you want to add salt. You want to use sea salt, not iodized salt. I actually hear that iodized salt um, stops or slows down the fermentation. I use about a tablespoon for every two pounds of veggies. The salt does two jobs. It draws all the liquid out of the cabbage, and it also creates an acidic environment so that unhealthy and unbeneficial bacteria, you know, bacteria that you don't want, um, does not grow in your ferment. Step five, which is the fun part, you want to wash your hands and get them nice and clean, and you're going to mash and mix up your cabbage and squeeze out all that good liquid, and the salt will help you. And as you push and mash more and more, you'll start to see that the, the salt will start to pull out more and more liquid, and uh, you'll, you'll start to see a nice, uh, a nice layer of, uh, of liquid on top. And step six, you want to push your cabbage down into the container so that it is submerged in the liquid. You don't want it to be exposed to air so oxidation does not occur and bacteria that you don't want start to grow. Traditionally people use stones as weights but what I'm using is just a plate and I'm just gonna push it down with the plate to keep it submerged. You can also tweak out your recipe, you know, get creative with it. Put things that you like the taste of. Um, for me, personally, I, I put uh, garlic, I put thyme, I also put rosemary, you can use dry rosemary or you can even use fresh rosemary. And after that's all said and done and finished, you just put that away in a place where it's room temperature and um, you let that sit for about four or five days. And um, by the third day, it should start to get like this sour smell, it'll start to change and get that sauerkraut kind of smell to it. And before you know it, you'll be eating your own homemade sauerkraut which is delicious and I hope this quenched your curiosity and inspired you to make your own. Good luck and subscribe.